Hey folks, welcome to Girl Talk. We are sitting here at the very beginning of a fantastic show that we're super excited about. Oh, we how sure are, you, are. How are you ladies doing? Great, how are you this morning? Good. It's so nice to see you all. Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, <laughs> as always. Looking good. We've got <laughs> our, our, our dresses. We're holding on to summer, as Absolutely. usual. But, you know, fall fashion, it's coming around the corner. I cannot you wait. you got your long sleeve dress yeah. going. Yeah. And your booties. Make it work. i got the booties mixed in, the fall color. Yeah. I'm we're still in denial, though. Yeah. yeah, I don't blame you. We're easing <laughs> back. We're easing yes. in one step at a time. Absolutely. Well, we've got a great show. So we're going to, as you see, our Conan Automotive presence behind us. He is our buddy down in Stoughton who um, helps us out yeah. greatly with our car care he teaches questions. teaches us how to take care of our cars, something yes. I knew very little about previously. So. I know, and I'm still learning. Abs it's yeah. a work it's in a progress. progress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But because of a lot of his tips, I've been able to hang on to my pretty old high mileage car and save on a car payment. And you Good know what? You. I'm a fan of that. I don't know about you guys. Same yeah. Same here. Big believer in an ounce of prevention really can I'm trying to remember what he said. If you just follow the scheduled maintenance, mm -hmm. I can't remember how many uh, thousands of miles you should be able to get. It was like 150, 200,000? Oh, I don't know. Is easy, that crazy? easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking to him about my car that has now 140,000 miles okay. on it, and he's like, you easily can get that to 200,000 with just like basic maintenance. Basic mm -hmm. maintenance. Really? I mean, yeah, how great is that? I haven't had a car payment in like six years. Oh my so. gosh, you're so lucky. Such a way to oh, okay. so that's, that's, that's motivation funny. right there. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll chat with him about, of course, our car questions, mm -hmm. and, and we'll uh, pick his brain a little bit as usual. Um, we're also going to be checking in with Madison Geeks, our friends over there. Yes, again, a, sub a subject I think a lot of us didn't know so much about that we're learning more every time we talk with them. Who doesn't Clueless. need help yes. and assistance <laughs> when it comes to our technology? I know. Hey, have you guys heard that um, in our Madison area in southern Wisconsin, um, just recently there's been, the um, ATMs have been had, had skimmers applied. Oh, Have sure. you heard that? I just saw that on the news this yeah. morning. Yeah, so I guess their advice is what they discovered eight skimmers in southern Wisconsin just wow. between June mm. and this month. So the advice they're giving is to be sure to check the slot for any funny business before you put your card in. and Because it's a little device, right? So you can see it then. You can, you see can some yeah. But I think a lot of times it just goes unnoticed because we're not looking for them. We're not Exactly, not that's well put. And the other is um, sometimes they'll put cameras. Um, so be sure to cover your, your number when right. you're putting in your pin and that kind of thing. Wow. You know, the ways that you think you need to protect yourself against, I mean, technology is so great and it's so nice to have all these conveniences. But there are risks. It's Absolutely. added a lot of new risks and things that we just need to be aware of that we weren't before because it never was a problem 10 years ago, 5 years ago even. Mm -hmm. These are all such new things that we need and to be you constantly don't learning. And think about it happening in your own town. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. You think of it happening in a faraway land. New York right. City must That's have these problems. That's what I was just problems. Problems. In the Atlanta, city. You know, this is an Atlanta problem, but no, here in Madison, so I guess you just can't be too safe. So we'll check in. Good segue, thank you, <laughs> with those folks. Love a good segue uh, a little bit later. And of course, our friend from Apple Wellness. We just have a whole bunch of friends coming today, basically. We do. <laughs> Apple Wellness is here. So for healthcare questions and you know, again, you're, to your point, an ounce of prevention, talking about mm -hmm. how to, yeah. you know, utilize natural medicine and natural supplements to prevent illness and things of that nature. Inflammation is a big topic we talk mm -hmm. about a lot. Um, and so, back to safety. Back to safety. Back to safety. That's something I want to talk to Tim a little bit more about is the fact that the supplements aren't FDA regulated. And so how do we protect ourselves, get our money's worth, yeah. and, uh, and then have the, the benefit of prevention and health? And mm -hmm. I think that's where, you know, of course, well, we always talk to Tim and we can check in with him, but I think that's where using a store like Apple Wellness makes a big difference yeah, versus, you know, not going to call anyone out, but some of the big box retailers, they don't go through some of the steps and the processes right, to ensure yeah. quality is there. And that makes a big difference because you spend a lot of money on supplements. Oh, it, it really, it's an expensive investment. You want to make sure that you're investing wisely. And I actually looked it up. And um, they said that we spend about twenty-eight billion dollars a year. Wow, on supplements, oh and that includes goodness. just your vitamins and things, right, none sure. of the fancy stuff. I mean, that's yeah. that's everything. So that's we incredible. want to get our money's worth. No kidding. <laughs> well, we'll chat with Tim from Apple Wellness right after the break. We're excited about today's show. Hope you stay with us. We'll be right back with more Girl Talk.
Welcome back to Girl Talk. I just read recently that California uh, University of Berkeley said that there's 29,000 supplements on the market. Some say as high as 54,000 oh supplements on the market. Not one is regulated by the FDA. So with us today, we have our guest from Apple Wellness, Tim O'Brien. He's going to help us understand that and what that means for us. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Yeah, happy to be here. here. Oh, it's yeah. nice to have you. So that's a lot of stuff out there. And the fact that none of it is regulated by the FDA is a little unnerving. What do we do? What do we look for? What does that mean? Yeah, great question and great concern. I mean, you could literally be a guy in your garage making sawdust capsules and throwing something on the label and start to try to sell it places. Oh, wow. And if nobody <laughs> actually That's tests terrifying. that, mm -hmm. then you're in trouble. Uh, uh, also, though, I mean, keep in mind an orange is not regulated. I heard from uh, Dr. Whitaker, who managed some of our uh, food control into the country, that only some 2% of our food that comes into our country is actually overlooked and checked oh, wow. for purity, quality, et cetera, to go to our grocery marts. So our food, our supplements, yeah, they're not FDA regulated. They're not uh, checked over. And so you want to work with companies that have certificate of analysis on every single product that they sell, pharmaceutical grade, to prove mm -hmm. to you and me mm -hmm. that it is what they say it is, that it's pure. Is that the little USP symbol we're supposed to look for? Uh, USP is, is one grade. Uh, pharmaceutical grade is higher. Uh, there's oh. GMP grade, a number of different uh, certificates. But So what does that mean? Are we looking for something on the label or...? Yeah, so if you can see something that says pharmaceutical grade, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes though you actually need to look on the companies and say, hey, what are their certifications? Uh, because even a company can be honest. Do a little bit of a background check? Wow. Yeah, just check and do it a little bit. Because often even a company might be honest, but who they're buying from or oh, in China absolutely. or whomever could That's be a good point. Yeah. Kind of a, yep. yeah, there's kind of a trail you have to follow to yeah, get to the actual tr answer. And exactly. I think that that's a, a really good point is that, you know, just because it isn't FDA regulated doesn't make it bad. Just like an orange, it's wonderful for you, you know, and yep. that's not FDA regulated. But it just means that you need to be like a conscious consumer and be exactly. looking into what you're getting. Yep. So that's part of my job as the owner of Apple Wellness is, hey, the companies that we're searching out, mm -hmm. are they proving to you and me that they are what they say they are. So yeah. if you don't want to do your homework, this guy's done it for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> you do the legwork and then we just have to come in and you would said before you've even brought some of your own things and say, hey, what do you think about what I'm using? What might you suggest? And you really like to be a resource for yeah, folks. Yeah, it's just fun for me yeah. to do all this. It's my life. And a lot of folks don't have time to mm -hmm. do right. 50 hours of research on each thing, you know, right. and figure it out. So Come to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> so also, um, I've been hearing probiotics. Everywhere. Constantly. Radio, yeah. TV. Um, yep, out of Europe, clinicals. Yeah. Tell me about them. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are they good for? <laughs> what do they do? Help yeah. me out. It's a total uh, uh, hot spot right now. Pro means for, biotic means life. Mm -hmm. So the more life we get into us on a daily basis, the better and you're going to be set up for success as far as your enzyme production, vitamin production. 80% of your immune system is controlled by your gut flora. They call it the second brain because it controls so many actions oh, yeah. and reactions in the body. And your good and bad bacteria are always in a race. So it's everyone's winning decides the state and health of the rest of your body. And in this day and age, this culture, we've never been more inundated with things that kill life in our bodies from toxins, yeah. theoretical damage, oxidative Even stress. like an antibiotic. And that's something Jeez, I yeah. had noticed recently. I was on a heavy course of antibiotics and I was just feeling super off. Um, you know, nothing I was eating was working with me, but it's like you said, it's pro and anti. So you're, yeah. an antibiotic does the opposite. So yeah. you really need to replace that and get on a probiotic regimen. Yeah, antibiotic sure. literally means against yeah. life. Yeah. So it, it can help you, but you got to be on top of that. Yeah, it can and save a life sometimes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So I, I heard you say that it helps your body produce more enzymes, more vitamins, yeah. and improves your immunity. So I'm thinking winter and colds and sickness. Yes. So this is a good time if you've been thinking about probiotics maybe to start. Absolutely. And we're not talking just yogurt. We've talked about this before that having a yogurt a day is not even close to what you need. What mm -hmm. you need. Is yeah. that Yeah. Yep. It right? might be. A, a hundred years ago, it was a whole different uh, day and age. The food was different, et cetera. But in this day and age, yeah, you need more life going into your system because of all that we have against us. So a cup of yogurt may have one billion multiflora in it. Well, a good Sounds like a lot. <laughs> capsule, yeah, a billion. Uh, it has about 50 billion. So right. it'd be like gallons of yogurt. We talked about just yeah. chugging a gallon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we ought to do that. Alrighty. Well, we're out of time, but those were two really important things to talk 
talk about. I appreciate yeah. it on that. Absolutely. Always appreciate your help and your yeah. information. Thanks, Love Tim. It. Absolutely. So check out Tim. He's over at Apple Wellness. That's over in the Fitchburg area by Super Target. We'll be right back with Madison Geeks answering your technology questions. Good job, guys. Hi, and welcome back to Girl Talk. Here with us today, we have Kalal from Madison Geeks. You always give me such great information that I know nothing about. <laughs> always you. very informative. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> yeah, it's always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talk to us a little bit first about hard drives. Can you give us a little history? Why do they crash? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why? Yeah, so why? Well, well, hard drives. We, we all know what a hard drive is to a certain extent. Actually, we all don't know what a hard drive is, I guess. Um, we have a lot of people that uh, just assume that their entire machine is a hard drive mm -hmm. because something goes in and that's, you know, that's the hard drive. But uh, the hard drive is the component within a machine. It's a, it, it, for a laptop, it's a little smaller. For a desktop computer, it's a little bit bigger. But uh, this is a storage device. This is where when you are online and you're downloading something or you're putting information onto your machine or saving files, it's being stored onto your hard drive. Okay. Now, uh, a hard drive, in terms of the, the history about it, it's been around for a very long time. They used to fill rooms. They got smaller. They used to be you know, big, big devices. Mm -hmm. And they just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And yet holding more. And holding, but yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Smalling, uh, getting smaller, but uh, but having a larger capacity. Now, uh, when you look at a, a hard drive, really, it looks like a record player. Okay, a lot of people don't realize that you have these 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 circular discs, it like does. like a DVD, mm -hmm. okay. and you have a little arm in there that just kind of reads and writes, reads and writes, and just you know, as they get smaller, they also get faster too. Um, so those discs spin extremely fast. This little arm is reading and reading and reading and writing. Sounds like a pretty important arm. Yep, yep, a very, <laughs> very important arm. And uh, now that the, the capacity is one of the things that are happening now is that those little, cir you know, those little circular components there or, or disc, there's several of them inside the hard drive. So now you have several arms in there reading and writing, reading and writing. And so you have more storage space. But uh, part of the issues with the hard drive and the reason that they crash it's because you have all this movement going on. Oh okay? yeah, it never yep. stops. You got it. It's always it's always crunching. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can even hear it, and they're grinding away. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if, you're, yeah. if you're doing something large, you can hear your computer like whirring yep. away, yeah. and you're like, oh goodness, exactly. what's, what's going on in you there? You got it. You got it. So <laughs> so because of that, that's they, they, these drives expire very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, say you have a laptop, okay, and uh, you have this hard drive in there that has all these little components, these little arms whipping away inside there and you take it off your lap and you put it boom, down on the table or it kind of Ooh. takes a little thump. Sure. Then these little arms hit the disc and then boom, things just start going downhill from there. So it's a very so, sensitive exactly. part. You have to be very yep, careful. Yep, extremely sensitive. Oh, so, no. so that's why they crash and that's <laughs> why they're... What are you they're... thinking, Elise? Yeah. <laughs> I've had two hard yeah. arms. Yeah, yep, yep, exactly. So, so that, that is, that is a, an important thing that people don't realize, especially with laptops, that if these laptops don't have uh, the newer drives, which is an SSD, mm -hmm. then they're they're going to you know be running into some troubles moving forward. Sure, I drives. think people think that sometimes they're more durable than maybe they really are. Exactly. I mean, you've you talked even it. just about the hinges and lifting yep. it up by yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. by the screen. Yep. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we yeah. need to be very cautious with them, and I mean, especially they hold a lot of our life and a lot of the most important things we do. So you I think that's it. a good thing to get out there. And yeah. you'd mentioned SSD. Now I've heard mm -hmm. about these uh, quite a bit as something that you know some of my friends are doing, especially ones that are doing some pretty heavy usage with their computers to speed it up. Could you talk to us a little bit about what SSD means yeah, and if yeah. it can make your computer faster? It, it, can, it can extremely make your machine faster. Um, SSD stands for solid state disk mm -hmm. or solid state hard drive. And uh, what happens is uh, where a disk, a traditional hard drive, has all these spinning parts, mm -hmm. little arms that read and write, a solid state drive is almost like that flash drive. You've heard of flash drives before, yeah, thumb sure. drives. So you plug it in, there's no moving parts. It's all based on electri or electricity, and it all will, you know, there's no moving components in there. So the speed is extremely fast from where it comes from the processor of the, of the, of the computer to the hard drive and then back to the processor again. So solid state drives are really just the, the future of machines. We'll see, you know, drastically, you know, these, these hard drives 
traditional hard drives going away and solid state drives. And, and I've out. used a computer that has one and, you know, previously didn't have one before and then right. noticed, I mean, I noticed such an unbelievable it's difference. Night and, and, I mean, it, and it night booted and up like really? that, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I think we're all a little impatient as well, so right. that's a great thing to have. Is that why um, iOS system seems to come up so much faster. Right, right, exactly. And, and most new machines, especially a lot of new uh, MacBooks, are, are already pre-installed with the uh, SSD hard Yeah, you open up and bang, you're ready you to got work. It. You got it. Oh, well, yeah. we're out of time. Yep, no uh, worries. We, <laughs> <laughs> never of long course. enough. Fun. Of course, of course. Check out Madison Geeks for mm -hmm. any technology questions that you may have mm -hmm. or concerns. Of course. Thanks, thanks Thank for you. being Thank here. You for Stick me. around for more Girl Talk. We'll be back with Joe Conant. Welcome back to Girl Talk. As promised, we are going to talk to you a little bit about oil changes. We'll get some basics from the masters over here at Conan Automotive. And joining me is Joe himself. And how are you doing today? Great. So, we got to pick your brain as usual about some car things that we've got questions about. Sure. So, what I want to know today is kind of give us some basics about oil changes. Everybody needs them. Right. So walk us through just some real basic things about what you're doing when we come in and get an oil change. Well, it's pretty basic. What we do is obviously we just get the vehicle in the air and we do a lot of basics up above as far as checking all the lights. We go through a simple right down the list here as far as what we should check and so on just to make sure everything is safe on your vehicle. We check the, like as far as the suspension goes, we check the rear shocks, the front struts, we make sure there's no oil leaks, make sure the exhaust is intact and where it should be. Just check out the basic integrity of the underneath the vehicle along with like the, the rust condition that happens in Wisconsin. Okay. Um, we take a look at the tires, tell you the condition of the tires, just basically tell you the condition of the integrity of the whole vehicle. So, so there's a lot more to an oil change than just the oil change. Yeah, it's not just simple as just pulling the plug and changing the filter. No, right. you got to check things out. Um, a lot of people make mistakes by, you know, it's fun to do your own oil change at home, but there's things that you just can't check when you're rolling underneath your vehicle in your garage right. on a Saturday Absolutely. afternoon. Well, being able to get underneath the car like this, for one, is has to be beneficial. I it, would have yeah. no idea what I'd be looking for, but um, being able to be under here and get the full picture. And talk to me a little bit, you mentioned that you, you look for rust. So how common is that being in Wisconsin after a long winter? Well, the biggest thing is not so much the rust of the body panels, but like the rust of the brake lines, Okay. especially the brake lines, because there's not an indicator on your dash saying my brake lines are rusty and they're about to blow. Right. So when we look at the brake lights like on this vehicle, they're hidden up underneath here, but we look at those and if there's bad spots, mm -hmm. we'll let the customer know. It's like, okay, you got to keep an eye on this. Right. And it's getting to be more and more common now because people are driving their cars, you know, 100, 200,000 miles. Right. And it's, it's, it's starting thing, to catch up. Right. But yeah, absolutely. Those are some of those safety things that we might not know to look for. Right. And we might not know to ask those questions whether or not our shop is checking for those things. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. Awesome. Okay. Well, good pointers. Uh, kind of walk me through just the process of an oil change. I, ha I really don't know what you do. Well, now that the vehicle's up in the air, so half of it's actually done. We do a lot of checks when the vehicle's done. We check all the okay. fluid conditions levels, top off the washer fluid, check all the lights, mm -hmm. check the wipers, just basically check all the things that need to be okay. looked at that you'd probably overlook. Um, when the technician starts, he'll start by draining the oil, taking the filter out. We'll basically note the condition of the oil too because a lot of times if you got like a, a, a leak as far as coolant leak into the engine, mm -hmm. the antifreeze would come out first. So it's good to note the condition of the oil. If it's really sludgy, maybe advise the customer that they have to get the oil changed more frequently other than what they're doing now. Yeah. Um, we'd look at like the condition of the hoses, especially like the radiator hoses going to the radiator, make sure that they're in good shape, not leaking. Okay. Just the, the biggest thing, like I like to stress is doing maintenance versus repairs. Because let's say if we did this oil change and you know just kind of blew through it and the customer takes it and they're on their way to work or they're coming back from the grocery store on a Sunday night and the radiator hose fails right. or something else happens that we should have seen when we did the oil change, mm -hmm. well, that's the important thing. So, I mean, yeah, an oil change, if you're paying like a $20 oil change, that's what you're getting. Right. But if you pay, you know... <laughs> you get what you pay for. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you're not, they're not looking at the things that need to be looked at. Right. So, 
I mean, yeah, in our shop here, we're going to note everything. And sometimes we may be high, but we're not the one that's going to judge it. The customer's going to be judging what they want to fix on their vehicle. Absolutely. And if we didn't tell them what's going on, we're not doing a good job. So you're going to make those recommendations right. on all facets of the vehicle based on Correct. what you're seeing while you're doing the oil change. Yep. And that's really what's, I think, important because a lot of us, me, guilty, bring their vehicle in when they need an oil change or when their check engine lights mm -hmm. on. And other than that, that's about it as far as when right. you're going to get things looked and, at. So. And like with the 29 minute oil changes, like a lot of companies try to promote, you cannot, you can't do a thorough job. You really sure. can't. I mean, it, yeah, you're getting what you pay for and you want it done fast. Well, the old saying, haste makes waste, exactly. Absolutely. I just soon take 45 minutes or an hour, check the vehicle all complete and then let the know, you know, customer know that, yeah, you're good to go or yeah, you got to address these problems. Absolutely. And it just makes sense. And that's always a good reminder when we're talking to you is, you know, it's really about staying on top of it and getting ahead of those repairs, trying to get the longevity out of your vehicle rather than waiting until something is wrong right. or something has gone terribly wrong. That's when the expense really goes up as well. Oh yeah, it goes up a lot. Yeah. You know, double, triple, whatever, but it's nice to know like, it's nice to know if you're going to have a problem versus, oh my God, I'm going to wake up to a problem. Right, absolutely. So. And I got another question about oil changes while we're on the topic. So mm -hmm. some of the newer vehicles, mine isn't really all that new. I've got over 100,000 miles on my car, but I do have the um, notification of when I need an oil change. So it actually tells me percentage uh, right. of you know time to oil change. So tell me a little bit about the difference there if you can because it tells me I need an oil change long after the recommended mileage. What are your thoughts? I really, you know, and this is my personal experience, for whatever, my years in the business, I, I would ignore it. Really? If I'm a customer asked me that, I would ignore it. I would stick to your mileage mm -hmm. versus that percentage. Okay. Um, it, it's just, I like mileage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from the old school and yeah, we do either, you know, 4,500 or if you run the full synthetic, go six. But I don't really believe in that. But the manufacturers say, you know, they spend a lot of time and money and the dealerships may, yep, say that, you know, do this. But I, mm -hmm. I think it's going to come back to haunt them. Well, I really I do. Well, I think the other element there too is if you're a procrastinator like myself, um, what happens is you wait until it tells you you need an oil change. You may already be really past the time mm -hmm. that you need an oil change, and then, you know, however many days or sometimes weeks then still goes by, right. you're running out of that oil. So, well, I mean, if, if for just quickly on that oil, if, if somebody can't, like, if you went out and bought a brand new vehicle today and you wanted to keep it for 150 or 200,000 miles, I mean, that might be a lot to you, but I would suggest running a full synthetic oil right from the beginning change it every 6,000 miles, don't worry about that indicator as far as percentage, and you'll get the life out of that engine. I mean, the, the products that they're building nowadays are superior to even what they built five years ago. Okay. So Great just keep up the job. maintenance. Well, thank you so much for walking thank me you. through it. I greatly appreciate it. If you need some pointers, come on out to Stoughton and check out Conant Automotive. Joe's the master. Thanks to Joe, thanks to all our guests, and thank you for watching. Please join us next time.